Hello and welcome to another video on Spot On with Shruti. Special right triangles are found in history and they actually came into being even before 500 BC or at least five around that, that time. And all of you are welcome to go ahead and Google the history for those who are interested. But it's not just when it came into being. It is also about how special right triangles find a predominant application in trigonometry. After all, trigonometry is nothing but triangles, right? It is nothing about nothing but the measurements and the angles and everything about triangles. And special right triangles form a key important structure in trigonometry. So on today's video, we are going to learn about special right triangles to get the concept of these triangles and how we utilize the Pythagorean triplets or the Pythagorean formula to figure out the triplets in a right angle triangle. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Well, on the screen is the entire uh, thing about these special right triangles that we're going to learn today. And let me just zoom piece by piece so we can go over them one at a time. So here, what uh, you see on the screen is actually how the Pythagoras theorem, Pythagoras theorem came into being, where you see the gray, which is the right angle triangle here, I'm shading it. It basically, it's the shaded region. If we wanted to know the side length of a right angle triangle, it's uh, the shape that forms when you incline three different squares of three different side lengths, A, B, C, and the portion that you get in between. And the formula that we come up with is A squared plus B squared equal to C squared, where C becomes a hypotenuse. So we're going to utilize this idea in a right angle triangle, which is the application. Now, special right angle triangles are of different kinds. The first and foremost, as you can see, is a three, four, five triangle. It's a very common triangle, so it is exactly like this. Now, utilizing the Pythagoras theorem, a squared plus b squared equal to c squared, so we can see our c value is five for this one, and our b value is three, and our a value is four. And if you plug in these uh, values into the Pythagorean formula, you will always get 3 squared plus 4 squared equal to c squared. So 69, I'm sorry, that's going to be a 9. So 9 plus 16 will always give you 25, which is exactly nothing but 5 squared. So that's the idea, a special type of a right angle triangle. Now this comes in various combinations like as you can see in multipliers like i've already written them down so we can understand the x stands for the multiplier so what if this x was equal to 2 then we come up with another pythagorean triplet which becomes 3 times 2 being 6 4 times 2 being 8 and 5 times 2 being 10. so when you come across these kind of formations or the side lengths on a right angle triangle what we need to identify and what will help is what type of a special right triangle is it? Is it a 3, 4, 5 or like 6, 8, 10? And also notice the hypotenuse on the right angle triangle is always going to be the highest measurement. 10 is the highest among 6, 8 and 10. 3, 4, 5, 5 is the highest measurement or the dimension. Same way we can take x being equal to, let's say we're going to take a number here. We can even take five, for example. So this side can be three times five, which is going to be 15, four times five, which is going to be 20, and five times five, which is going to be 25. And you can test it out by using the formula of a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. And the beauty of this is, once you know the special type of a right angle triangle that it is a three, four, five, then this is exactly what it means. Three, four, five means uh, 15 squared plus, uh, what is this? 20 squared equal to, it should give you 25 squared, which is nothing but 625 right here. And if you calculate this, 225 plus 400, I already know this offhand, so that will give you the answer of 625, which is exactly 625, meaning 25 squared. 
So we can come up with a variety of combinations for the multiples of a 3x, uh, 3, 4, 5 type of a special right triangle. Now moving on, there are other two types of special right triangles which uh, I have written down here. One is uh, 30, 60, 90. So as you can see on the screen, I've already written it. What it tells us is that when the angle measurements inside a right angle triangle are 30 and 60, and of course the third one is going to be 90, then this is the configuration that we see. The side lengths are going to be in the ratio where x is the multiplier. So the side length opposite of 30 degree angle is going to be the measurement of x, which is a short leg. The side length adjacent to the 30 degree is going to be square root of 3 times x. And obviously, the hypotenuse for this 30, 60, 90 triangle is going to be 2 times whatever the side length of the short, shorter side is. Now, let's take some example. Let's take uh, x equal to 1. If x is 1, this becomes 1 given the fact that we have 30 degrees here and 60 degrees on the opposite side. So, this is square root of 3 times 1 and 2 times 1 is going to be 2. And again, with respect to the angle here, we can come up with sine of 30, cosine of 30, and tangent of 30, and now, and other three trigonometric ratios whatsoever, just by utilizing this particular angle. All right, the next uh, common special right triangle is going to be a 45, 45, 90. Now, on this one, both the legs, the perpendicular, the ones that form the L shape on a right angle triangle are of the same length, x, any number, and the hypotenuse is going to be x times square root of 2. So obviously, again, if you take the a squared plus b squared formula, x squared, if this was a and this was b and the hypotenuse was c, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared, and this is equal to x square root of squared, so obviously we get 2x squared on the c squared and that is exactly what we have. So that's another way of looking at it. But now let's understand and let's say the multiplier is x is equal to 2, so we will have 2, 2. Given the fact that the angles are 45, then the side lengths are going to be same and the hypotenuse is going to be square root times that side length, okay? or you can even write that as 2 times square root of 2. So that's the basic essence of these special right triangles. 3, 4, 5, 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, the most common ones that are used in trigonometry to figure out some analysis. Now, there are many triplets, Pythagorean triplets that are utilized outside of 3, 4, 5. There are also triplets like common triplets of 5, 12, 13, where the pi Pythagoras theorem applies. There is 7, 24, and 25. There is another one as 8, 15, 17, and the list goes on and on. But these are some other combinations of the Pythagorean triplets that can we can find use agent. Now, one last thing that I also have referenced on one of my prior videos, and I'm going to show it to you here, is that how these right angle triangles are always used in trigonometry. Now, trigonometry and unit circles are together, right? So everything is with reference to a unit circle, which I've already drawn here, where radius is going to be one unit. So if we just pick any other point B, or any, any point here, and we just join it with the center at some angle theta, okay? And we drop a perpendicular from this point B onto the onto the x-axis, we get a right angle triangle, as you can see that I've drawn in blue. So if I say this is A, this point is C, ABC becomes a right angle triangle, and that's where we find the application of a right angle triangle, depending on what type of right angle triangle, I mean, whether that is a 3, 4, 5, or what comes up, hence another application. And this is something which I referenced on my unit circle videos also, so uh, you can, you're more than welcome to check it out. So this will be it for, as a short summary of uh, the special right triangles that we have, the 3, 4, 5, uh, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. And hopefully you liked the presentation. If you did, please be sure to 
send me questions or any other queries. If you want me to prove the Pythagoras theorem to you and how it came into being, I would be very happy to make the video on that as well. So until on the next one, I will see you. Bye-bye.